Hey guys, Chris here. So if you're someone that dreamed of having a James Bond-like watch on your wrist that has a camera, you can place calls on it, and you can even do all of the stuff that your normal, typical smartwatch would, but on your wrist, then this could be a watch that you're interested in. It's the Cos Pet Prime 2. It's an absolute mammoth-sized watch, as you can see on my small wrist here. This one has all the specs of a smartphone crammed into a smartwatch. It has the Helio P22 octa-core chipset, 4 gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage, a 2.1 inch IPS screen that is big enough that we can, well, we can actually type and reply to text messages and WhatsApp messages and things like that right on the watch itself. And it does have a very large battery, in fact, the largest in a smartwatch ever of 1600 milliamp hours. So we have this super large watch right here. It does come with a pre-applied screen protector. The accessories box on the side does house our two watch straps, which I have already pulled out here for you just to quickly show you. So it does have the quick release tabs right here, you can see. So you can quickly get them on and off and you can swap them over. These watch straps are only about 14 US dollars. So if you need a replacement, you want a different color, not too difficult to do. And then we get our data cable slash charging cable here, which is USB to Pogo port four connector pins right there. Now the charge time to charge the 1600 milliamp hour battery on this watch here is rather slow, very slow. It's two hours and 50 minutes to fully charge it. No matter what charger I use, it seems to only be charging at either five watts or 10 watts, which is, you know, it's, it's slow for 2021 standards. I wish it would support some quicker charging. Would have been nice there. So under this little tab, you will find a second screen protector, another one included. So that is good. And we have here the instruction guide manual. This is all in English. So it quickly outlines everything, getting it connected up to their application, a little bit about the watch itself. But I'll go over all of that in this in-depth review. And you can see we have an after sales support card here as well, if you needed this. The weight of it is also quite a bit too. So we are looking here at 124 grams. My other watches I do own, for example, the Magic Watch 2, that is 64 grams. And you can see the size difference. Look at just how big this is. And I'll show you the watch on my wrist soon, shortly. So you can see that it is, well, twice the size. Now, Cospet do claim that this has the largest battery in a smartwatch, 1600 milliamp hours. And I happen to believe them because this thing just being so huge. So it's a 2.1 inch screen here. The resolution is 480 by 480. Now get a little bit onto the screen later on once I just move on from the design of this first. Now it does have a maximum brightness of 329 nits, which isn't too bad. You can still make it out in sunlight, but it's not gonna be the brightest out there. It does come with a pre-applied screen protector. So right up the top here, we have that interesting little camera here. So this is like a watch for say James Bond, a spy watch because it's got a camera on it. It does support face unlocking. This is a Sony IMX 214 13 megapixel sensor that I believe was used in the OnePlus, the first model I think it was, or the OnePlus 2. And when you flip this one down, you can use it like that on your wrist and you flip it up, of course, for the face unlocking or into your selfie mode there. Two buttons right here. So this is power on or to wake. So it's a power button, you hold it down and you do get another menu here with recent apps, power saving and everything else. And I'll go through all of that shortly. And then our back button right here that you can, of course you need this in Android just to go back because it doesn't seem to want to support uh, gestures completely on this. So it does run Android 10. Now this is ceramic. So they say around the outside of this part right here. So it's a ceramic there, but it is a plastic frame and build. So on the left, there is a microphone so we can handle calls on this. And I'll give you a sample of what the loudspeaker sounds like too in this review. The loudspeaker, by the way, is right here, that's this little slot. So that's gonna fire the sound out. Now, I don't believe this is waterproof at all. They've made no mention of it. There's no IP rating, so keep this out of the water. I think for just light splashes, it'll be okay, but I certainly would not swim with this watch, considering the fact that we've got the SIM tray there too, between the two buttons. Now, this SIM tray just supports a nano SIM, as you can see, and there's no rubber gasket around it, so this is definitely not waterproof. And even a few splashes, I don't know about that. Just a bit of light rain, that's as far as I'll go with this watch. So there is our Pogo port pin connector, of course, for charging it, and I'll just show you how that connects up. The cable just latches on like that with the magnetic, two magnets there, magnetic force to hold it on place, in, into place there. 
and the heart rate reader there, the sensors on the back. It also does have a screen protector, well, a protector plastic over it that I've already pulled off, and it seems reasonably accurate, but it's not really integrating with any applications, and I'll go through the applications in the menu and the performance of this watch too now, but just to point out that the removable watch straps, silicon, I haven't had a reaction from them from wearing them wearing them now for a few days, and giving quite a bit of a pull on that too. Seems strong enough, and any point of weakness in any of these watches, especially ones with a plastic frame, is going to be where this connects up the watch strap to the frame, the plastic frame. That's where they've all failed on me when this is broken off, and it seems to be a weak point on all watches, but this one so far is looking good. But of course, if you're running along, you snagged it on a fence, you would probably end up bending this buckle strap and have it pull off before breaking that, at least I would hope so. So it is heavy, it is big, and you can see what it looks like on a wrist. It is very, very, very large. It really does stand out. So now I'll run you through the UI. So the screen is, well, it's very big for a smartwatch, does have some limitations being the fact that it's round. So right here, that's just the normal watch face. You can hold down and change these. They have a store that I'll show you as well to go and swap over to them. So there's a lot of different watch faces four different styles. That one there is the default, which has a quick launch for our camera. So tapping here, that's to go back. So if I swipe down, that will bring up the toggles. Touch response, sometimes I've noticed it either the top or the bottom can sometimes be a little bit off and I have to press a tiny bit harder. So the screen brightness, I've got it set on the lowest at the moment, just so it looks reasonable on camera. Otherwise I found it was too bright no matter what camera settings I was testing out. Maximum brightness, 229 nits of brightness. So we've got our toggles there for GPS, data, wireless. Takes that SIM card in there, of course. And if I swipe to the left, to the right here, you can see that I'm on 4G with two bars, remaining battery life. We've got uh, Bluetooth mode there. And that is uh, airplane mode too as well, of course. And that's just to clear out the task manager there. So notifications are from when you go back to the main screen. So just that's the main screen there. Swiping this way, all of the watches notifications. So they don't show up the icons at the top, but they show through this way. And this way going up, swiping up, brings up our weather. And you can go and look through that, what the weather's gonna be like. So we've actually got a little bit of a winter here, but you can see very soon it's gonna be 21 degrees. Amazing weather that I have here. So going back here. And then finally swiping from the right to the left is all of our menu there for this smartwatch. So we've got a lot of different applications, all your standard ones. So phone, you can place your phone calls. We've got the dialer there. You can see our history too come through. I've done a couple of test calls. And yes, it is possible to place calls on it. Is it amazing call quality? No, it's not. There's no noise cancelling microphone. Uh, which will be a bit of a deal breaker to some people, but remember there's Bluetooth as well with this, so you can pair things up to it. Uh, contacts, SMS, so you can reply to text messages all from your smartwatch. So that is pretty good uh, with the keyboard settings. So there's all various different settings in this, of course. I won't go through all of them. Standard kind of settings there. So we have the uh, storage you get normally around about just over 50. I think it was 55 gigabytes free with this, four gigabytes of RAM too it has. Languages system, about the watch, Prime 2. So it does run Android 10, as you can see there. And we are on the latest firmware. With this one, the latest update has come through. So that's all pretty standard there. Now our watch face store is their own little application that connects you up to various different watch faces. So you can see they took a little while to load in some of these and go through then and install those if you needed a change from the ones that already came pre-installed with. Now, yes, Play Store is in on this. And okay, it's not gonna fit the screen properly. I mean, look how everything's all crammed in. So I can just search tab here and I'll show you that on-screen keyboard. Need to press a little bit harder there. Oh, I've already done a couple of searches before, but I want the keyboard to come up. All right, and I need to go back, hang on. So it can be a little bit cumbersome just getting around in this, but the keyboard is one of the good things about this. There we go. Nice and large, it's taking up more than half of the screen here. And I will just quickly type on here, hello, just to show you that um, it is possible with a bit of patience. Oh, YouTube is already there, but you need a bit of patience there for that. So if you're not happy with the screen being round, cutting things off, you simply hold down here and tap this. You turn off circular screen, you bring up the square screen, and then everything will fit in. But it doesn't look as sharp because it's scaling down now, of course. And with that 400 times 400, resolution that we have, not amazing there, not say I would 
use it much for things like this. But hey, I'm just showing you that it is actually possible. So I bring that back up again. I'll go back to the rounded screen. So for this menu here, that's how you get a recent task. So recent task and bring everything right up. You can see it all there. And I found that swapping over and moving through this is actually quite fast. It's really like an old MediaTek phone, some of the real budget cheap ones that I've reviewed in the past in the channel. So back into our menu and we have face unlocking. So if you flip the camera up, of course, for the face unlock, you can use this. And I have tested it out. It's okay, but I wouldn't really trust it too much. It's just 2D, of course, and there's no other form of security or anything like that with this. It's just the face unlocking. There's no fingerprint reader, which would have been good. Now, their own fitness modes, they have on board this particular watch here. They're okay. I've tested out a few of them tracking, so outdoor walking, out indoor running, outdoor biking, and we have basketball, football, ping pong, badminton, um, skipping, uh, they call it... <laughs> jump robo <laughs> okay um so that translation's got a little bit wrong there i think with that there there's our weather here's our camera too so i'll just quickly tap that to show you what it is like and it's not too bad so it does have auto focus which is a must really so everything it's looking at right now is well it's upside down so that's why you've got this to flip it i oh, know that's actually up the right way that's my printer right there and you can have a reasonably decent focus and shutter rates not actually too bad and to use it for selfies you simply then flip the camera up so you're looking at my overhead setup right now but here are some samples that i've shot on the prime 2. so you can of course use this to film vlogs and i do feel a bit strange holding up my wrist here talking to a watch but of course at least we have this option and it doesn't feel or look should i say as shaky here when using it on my wrist. And what else is on here? So gallery, music, recorder. So that's just a recorder using the inbuilt microphone. File manager, calculator, stopwatch, calendar, alarm, optimization, browser, app store. This is their own app store and it's only got two apps in it. And these are apps that, they've, that are optimized for the screen. So Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, but you just go through Play Store anyway. You don't have to use that. Assistant, uh, YouTube, I've installed this myself and we have Fit. Skype and WhatsApp. So you can use WhatsApp and reply and even leave your phone at home. If you didn't mind the keyboard, you could try and use it and just do everything on the watch itself. If you wanted to, that is. Now some of the other settings in here with the display, we've got a dark thing too, if you wanted that. And our brightness level can be manually adjusted too. So I can just tap here and then adjust that slider to whatever position works out best for me of course in whatever conditions but there is no ambient light sensor to be able to automatically adjust this brightness so that is probably why they have that swipe down quick toggle which of course you can only do from the main menu that's probably why they have this one here just to override it and now to go for a bike ride to test out the gps accuracy of this watch will it be accurate let's find out so that is my bike ride done and it is just over two hours and 20 minutes, uh, almost 18 and a half, well 18 and a half kilometers there that you can see and I've burned over a thousand calories. Now the GPS accuracy that with my test here you can see didn't work out to be so good. There were times when I was riding it was very very accurate but sometimes when going back you can see it's just drawn this straight line from one point there to the back and that is not correct. It recorded 10 kilometers when normally what I would have done probably about 14 so it's not correct at all in the way it's just cut that right through there were times that running Google Fit at least it's just maybe too demanding for the chipset or the watch although it shouldn't be it was completely lagging behind it just simply could not find the GPS signal for me
A quick recap here. So the things I like about the Prime 2 here is the sheer size of the screen. Even though it's big, it's bulky, it does add to the usability. The fact that you can use a on-screen keyboard, reply to those text messages, you can reply to that WhatsApp message, you can handle calls on this, you could even do a little bit of light browsing, although because of the rounded screen, it may be cutting off a lot of areas and that might inhibit a little bit the readability of whatever website you're looking at. So you have to put it then into the square mode, but hey, at least they thought of that. Now the UI is very fast, it is fluid, and I don't have any problems getting around in it, that is good. Touch response of the screen is mostly good, apart from just the very top and the very bottom I have noticed, does sometimes require me to just go and hit it again, tap it again, uh, which might be slightly frustrating for some people too. Now the camera quality, nothing amazing, as you'd expect for just a, well, very dated sensor, but it's a small sensor, 13 megapixels in a watch, and we do have face unlocking, and you can even record 1080p footage with it, with, which is something that, hey, most smartwatches cannot do that at all. Put your SIM tray, your SIM card in the SIM tray in this, and away you go. You can leave your phone at home and just run with this. But it's not gonna be an all out amazing experience from a lot of the things I've shown you in this video, just because of the sheer size of the screen and those restrictions and things with it. So GPS tracking, I found the GPS tracking on this was not amazing, okay? Uh, it missed a lot of places because it completely lost GPS signal. Various times during the bike ride I went on was 18 kilometers, but it only tracked about 10 properly, uh, which is not good at all. That's why it would just draw a straight line from some points because it thought I was in another area and it would just jump about, draw a straight line and not good at all for GPS tracking. Now the heart rate sensor does seem to be accurate compared to my other watches. So my heart rate that I showed before, the quick look at it, so it was like 89 or in the 80s, um, me moving around here in the office and recording and things. If I do the same with another smartwatch, more or less the same result. But it took a long time to get the reading and it doesn't work with third party apps like Google Fit that I tested out. Google Fit did not seem to register or work with the heart rate sensor in this. And then the raise to wake. Raise to wake feature, the screen does flash on, but it flashes off quickly, and a lot of the times, it just simply doesn't work the raise to wake for me. So they need to tweak the sensitivity of the accelerometer or the gyroscope, whatever they're using for that, so it triggers it a little bit better. Because that's an important feature to have in a watch, is to be able to just lift it up, look at the time, and okay, it is working for me now, but a lot of the time, like this then, from a simple movement like that, didn't work at all. So all up, it is a unique watch, it is a big watch, Different, very, very different. But if you wanted that James Bond tight watch, as that's always been a dream of yours, then this is really the watch to get. But bear in mind all of those compromises you do have with getting such a, a toy like this. That's what it basically is, a toy. I wouldn't be using this as my main phone, my main smartwatch on my wrist all the time. Definitely not. So thank you so much for watching my review here of the Cospet Prime 2.